favor. It's been, I've been scoring against Magnus instead of losing so many games as happened earlier in their matchups. Now he hasn't and been a winning much. Big, <laughs> big, big think yes. by uh, uh, Magnus, and the, bre the best he could produce was just to make Luft h7, h6. Uh, Hikaru said, well, now's the time. I'll take the pawn. Knight takes c4. Knight takes c4 has been played. Rook takes c4. He box. cleverly avoided checkmate. Very clever. <laughs> And as you now, if you can, I think you want to play rook c5 and b5 as white, and then double rooks on the c file, put pressure against c7. So you can achieve b5. That might be. That's a dominating position, what you've just described, and it's definitely something Magnus has to avoid. Magnus dropped back with his queen, recognizing that rook c5 was essentially unstoppable. He's preparing the move bishop to a d5, which is actually what happened after queen d6. What did. Uh, um, rook Hikaru c5, played? I believe, yes. Or b5. Um, Hikaru played rook c5, bishop d5, and b5. And this is a good position. Uh, this is just, 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 this is just good, good for white. Absolutely. We're putting pressure on c7. Bishop on f1. Now we see like it does a very, very good job protecting g2. And even, I even, I'm not even sure Hikaru is going to play uh, f3. It protects b5, protects um, g2, and allows white time to let's say play rook d to c1, queen to c3, triple. And despite being double pawns, it, it's really effective in fixing uh, c7 and a7. And Magnus thought it was necessary, therefore, to play c6 and get rid of the potential weakness. And we, we saw um, Nakamura quickly recapture. Um, and uh, yeah, you got us caught up with the Maybe now game. queen e3, queen e5 as a way of trying to undouble or improve the queen position for white. But really, a, a pawn up for, for Nakamura, a second consecutive game. Uh, this tournament where he is pushing Magnus. And let's catch up with the, with the current position because um, Magnus rather is trying to get some counterplay. And he has, gone for, queen, he has gone for queen e5. Magnus probably doesn't want to take because d4 is a target. But, uh, but slow, he has taken. He has taken? Well... He has taken, no, Magnus only 50 seconds in the clock. Now after d takes e5... He's played g5, desperate for some counterplay here. Trying to well, this is just very, very nice for White. White's uh, extra pawn yep. has now been undoubled. Thank right, ever you. since c6, ever right? Th oh, and ever th and since g5, I was uh, <laughs> thinking more. The uh, other set of pawns. The yeah. other set of pawns. g5 so. is a good move because Magnus does want to activate the king, maybe improve it. Uh, f5, for instance. I'm doubtful. What about rook? C3 to G3? Rook C7 instead. Uh, Nakamura is uh, traded C7. off a pair of rooks. King G7, Rook D7, well, I like Rook, rook C7. C7. Rook D7, Rook D7. And now um, he's played Rook to A1. So uh, just fixing the... Oops. Um, aiming perhaps to go to uh, A6. Well, just keeping the black rook honest. Uh, now the black rook is going to be tied down to the a7 pawn for quite Bishop some time. Bishop F3. Oh, wait. Um, somehow G, G4. Um, we've got a few more moves in. Yeah. So G... So, so Magnus did activate the king. He kind of felt n necessary to play g4. Stop king f5, exactly. And now h3. And But uh, now black is very active because uh, despite a7 being a weakness, if black gets a rook to d1, I mean, sacrifices pawn a7, gets the rook to d1, that's a very annoying pin on the bishop on f1. Right, so the king h2, king g3 is on... Well, right, right now... If king h2 rook... He's played rook d2 and he's read that properly to, to stop king h2. Why does that stop king h2? I that think is king a good h2 question. You can still play king good, h2 and what do you play? Bishop? Move. I guess bishop e2 after king h2. Uh -huh. King h2, bishop e2. Yes. Uh -huh, going into a rook ending. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that's a good move. So, so instead, Nakam's played rook a3. Nice tickle against that bishop that is dominating so now, in the position. The bishop has dropped back to d5. Yes, back to d5, exactly. And now there's a bishop d3 check. And get the king out of that mating net. Go bishop d3 check, king f1. So oh, king f1 walks into rook d3. Yeah. I so, apologize. So pointing out that we can't play, um, we can't play rook takes a7. Um, rook d1 is just... Well, we can try it. We but can definitely we can try, try it, it, but now we'd have to be we'd be compelled rook to play rook d7 or rook a4. Then rook a4, and now maybe bishop oh. f3, trying to play uh, bishop e2, and it's probably a perpetual after rook a2 but, bishop. By the way, uh, Hikaru dropped back with the rook after bishop d5. He did not capture on well, a7. He dropped back with rook a1. And then definitely Magnus would be happy with the draw here. He's just played bishop to f3. Back to f3. 
That's right. So the idea again being this clever idea that if king h2, bishop e2, because then bishop e2, rook e2, and um, you can't hold on to all the pawns. That is true. That is true. But once again, let's take a look at that that move. Rook a3, bishop d5, rook, rook takes. Rook a7, so rook d1 threatening bishop c4, which would of course I be devastating. I want to play rook c7. So you have to play rook c7 or rook, rook a4. Rook c7, bishop f3 to play bishop e2. And instead, um, he uh, went. Rook e2. And instead, Dead. though, um, and now we could play bishop e4 perhaps, but um, instead it was uh, f3 that's been played by Nakamura. So that's Nakamura at this chose a different strategy of playing f3 to, to blunt that bishop. The problem is the g5 pawn is so good, it fixes all those pawns on light squares. And now after Magnus played f6, he's going to just try to walk the king into f4 to g3. But it's really unpleasant that this one pawn on g5 controls three of white's pawns. Well, if yeah, we get caught absolutely. up with the current position, we see that... Um, bishop takes f3. He didn't go for the king e5 right away. It is comfortable for Magnus. He has <gasps> yes. a very good oh position God, no. now. Rook on d2. And now Nakamura's king. got 11 seconds Great left. Bishop. It's a position that you're up upon is white, but it's much easier to play as black. And we've seen, I think, Fabiano made himself in kind of a similar situation, just having a very active rook and bishop for black when he played against uh, Nakamura. And it yeah. looks like they're kind of, they've been repeating moves actually a couple of times. Nakamura getting kind of nervous. He's got 13 seconds. This is losing, guys. Rook He's B2 shuffling. here wins. Rook B2 is winning. Rook B2 yes, is if you winning. Play, yes. According and to Andrews, minus, minus four. The, um, there's a mating net eventually, or a Zugzwang. This yes, is the yes. current position on the board. Yes, this is uh, over. The thing is, black can also just push the e-pawn. He's, he's played rook d4, king g3. Um, so show us what the threat is here. Just pushing, he's just pushing the e-pawn up. He's pushing the e-pawn, and he also has threats of rook h2 and rook h1 mate. And you can't stop both. Just domination, domination. And this is, this is one of those, it's very similar mm -hmm. in some ways of that other game. Uh, uh, between uh, Hikaru and yeah, Fabiano. well, the pawn on g5, the pawn on g5 now, is amazing. Resignation by Hikaru Nakamura after the move e3. Um, wow. with e2 coming wow. in the game, exactly. Wow, and now a massive turtle out there. If as Magnus Carlsen um, dances, the gap. did you see him dancing a little bit as he walked off the oh, stage? Yeah, he had a he big grin on his face, he was definitely pumped. Those are he those was down.